So we'll call the meeting to order at 6.02. And let's go ahead with roll call. Uh, it looks like Laurel's there, Trista, Peter, Pam, Jennifer, Randy, Cindy, Angela, Susan, Danielle, Pamela, and did I miss anybody? I don't think so. I can't hear anybody if I did. So it looks like Andrea might be the one that's not here right now. Is there anyone else that we're missing? Uh, Aaron Helzer is excused. Noah is excused. Andrea should be joining us. Um, and Marsha Martin will not be joining us because interviews for public service chief is this evening. And Joanne, it's on its way. Okay. All right. Is there any public invited to be heard? Oh, I am there. I am okay. Can you guys hear me from my end? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. So any public to be heard? Did anyone have a chance to look at the minutes? I did. And if so, do we have an approval of the minutes? Um, I have a question on eight creative district okay. town hall pilot. Um, it mentions a desire to have a bigger performing arts space and it mentions Johnson Consulting, but it doesn't actually mention the, um, the, the, the concert hall, concert facility and convention uh, space, which is what Johnson Consulting was hired to deal with and what that all refers to. It seems to me that it should be a little bit more, in some way, a little bit more explicit what, what that's all about. Um, do you um, can you verbally say what you think that it should say and um, motion to make an amendment I, I would say that there is a um, this, uh, this has a real desire to have a bigger performing art space I would say that there is strong support if that's appropriate for that I wasn't at that meeting but uh, there, there is support for a uh, performance um, hall and convention space as has been proposed to the Longmont City Council um, and then um, in the next and B maybe say in their um, feasibility report to the council Johnson Consulting suggested I would suggest those two changes. Did we discuss that last month? I don't yeah. remember. Does that seem right, Angela? Because really the first the first question is really kind of a report on that town hall meeting that I went to about the downtown creative district. And it was really a brainstorming session. And the two top priorities that came out of this brainstorming session, informal kind of thing, was... Um, more education for people in all over town about the creative district and the fact that people want a bigger performing arts venue in town. Those were just the two top <laughs> things that were talked about. So it's not really, I, I mean, I don't, you tell me, Angela, if that, if it needs to be changed according to what Peter's suggesting. Well, if you, if you pivot to Johnson Consulting, I think you have to explain what their role is, don't you? And if you do that, then you should mention that they are 
they were hired specifically to do a feasibility study for this performing arts center and um, convention space. <clears throat> I would just say though that I don't think that was a part of the discussion for the minutes though. Um, and the minutes should reflect what was communicated during the meeting last month. Angela, do you have suggestions about that? Yes, yeah, so we have two courses of action that can happen here. We can table the approval of the minutes and uh, Erin and I, Erin is, is ill today, but she and I will review the video. The, hey, positive for video. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> <He's coming. laughs> um, we will review the tape and uh, alter the minutes and bring the May 20 minutes back to the commission with suggested alter, uh, um, how <clears throat> should we get with a um, more detailed, description of the conversation as it happened and then you can review it and we can edit from there but some so we do although still need to technically make a motion to approve the minutes or to table the minutes um the other option um yeah no well that's that's really the option i think um, unless someone has better you notes. Approve or table. Okay. I mean, if somebody took better notes and can recall here, um, that would be fine. Well, the way, the, on B, regarding the museum's expansion, Johnson Consulting suggested a tough 50 seat facility. That has nothing to do with the museum. That, that 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 statement specifically is is quite misleading. It seems. No, to me. no, it totally has to do with the museum. They have three different. The Twelve hundred fifty seat facility the museum. The museum? No. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's what's in the museum. What they're adding to the museum. Yeah, they're oh, talking the museum about museum has a two hundred fifty seat facility that can be expanded. But well, so the two hundred fifty seat facility is a totally different facility. It's the Stewart Auditorium. No, it's no, not. I'm, they have three Stewart Auditorium is 250 museum. seats, so, and there is no possibility of expanding it to 1250. The 1250 seat recommendation from Johnson Consulting is for an entirely new, separate facility. Not at oh, the museum, I, right? Not, not at, the, at the museum, correct. And there gonna, is a location. I'm going to come in and just say the, the point of order here is simply the accuracy of the minutes. And so while we can debate the accuracy of the minutes here, it is a moot point because what needs to be reflected here is the conversation that was previously had in the last month's meeting. It seemed clear to me, and I don't want to speak on behalf of Erin because she's not here and she's an excellent secretary, uh, that this item needs to be reviewed. And um, so for the next meeting, we'll review it, alter it based upon the conversation that was had and then we can um, take those minutes and approve them. Also, if we want to have this conversation, I completely think that it is very valid, but certainly not for art in public places. So um, the point of order, of course, is, is either tabling the minutes or um, correcting the minutes if you have the accurate information based on the last conversation. I, right? would, move, I would move that we table the minutes and empower Angela and whoever else to review the tape and provide us with a um, accurate and carefully reviewed um, revision. I have one comment about, and I, I'm working off my phone trying to find the uh, minutes and, and for some reason I can't. Um, but there was, um, when you listed at the bottom, this is aside from what uh, Peter's talking about, and it was the upcoming date. Um, it said August 12th. Um, oh, no, I don't have my calendar in front of me. Was one of the um, regular meetings, but it should be August 19th. And Cindy, I can't believe you didn't catch that. Apparently 
I, 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 you're slipping. Failed. <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't even know what you're talking about. Are there any, so that will be added to the motion to table the minutes with alterations of item six, as well as the corrected date on the bottom for additional, or I'm sorry, free item eight? For future meetings. Is there any other changes to the minute? Shouldn't it be item eight? It's, it's eight on my copy of the minutes. Creative District Town Hall Pilot, that's item eight. Item eight, got it. Okay. okay. Do we need to restate the motion or is everybody clear here? Would you like me to restate it? I've got yeah, it. Yeah, go it's ahead. The, 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 the we table the minutes and empower Angela and whoever she wants to work with her to, to review the tape and provide um, a, a carefully checked uh, version of item 8B <coughs> and also that um, at the very end, upcoming uh, monthly meetings, August 12th, we change to 19th. A second. Okay, is everyone in agreement with that or anybody have any other um, changes they'd like to make? Okay, then we'll move on. Are there any additions or or to the um, the today's agenda. I'm not aware of any, and I can't hear Angela if you're talking. I'm not sure. Oh no, I'm just shaking my head. Nope. I. I'm oh, okay. Okay. Then number six has to do with Andrea. I believe this may have been, this was going to be our last meeting. <coughs> well, cheers to Andrea again. I feel bad if she <coughs> some meeting, she said she completely got Wednesday mixed up with Thursday and just wasn't aware that it was Thursday. So um, anyways, but. Uh, she will be attending our workshop, though, on the 26th, so we'll all have an opportunity if you are joining us in person to say hello, goodbye then. So that'll be good. Her, her term's up That's again? Great. Yep. Damn. <laughs> and, and she uh, did not re- or uh, she, I believe, is, I was hoping she's it, but she's moving on to other pastures, I think physically going, leaving Longmont. So, oof, it's a loss for Longmont big time. Hmm. Hmm. Oh no. Okay. So number seven is public art pro project update. And the first one is Art on the Move 2021. Go, go, Randy. And I'm working on sharing the screen. Hold on. But just you can talk about our um, sighting. Okay. Hello, everyone. So as you know, we have six um, 3D pieces to install for Art on the Move. Um, Angela, Andrea, and Cindy as the task force last Tuesday at the roost, which if you've not been to the roost, I highly recommend going to the roost. Anyway, um, we have determined the locations for the six 3D pieces. 
um, while Angela's getting the pictures, I can show you on paper. The um, Kala, which is acrylic and aluminum, it was this one, uh, that one there, you can see it. That one, since it is quite delicate, um, that one will be placed at the museum, so there can be eyes on it. The Under the Lover's Moon, which is the really tall powder-coated steel moon, crescent moon. I think I can show you that one too. That one. Oh, there, you're going to show it. Okay, cool. There it is. That one will be placed at St. Stephen's. Another, uh, so there's four at St. Stephen's. The next one is that one, yep. That is called the Protector. And that one will also be placed at St. Stephen's. The third one called Wild Ones. Uh, not that, uh, that one, yep. Will be placed at St. Stephen's. And then Cacti, Mid-Century Mod Cacti Mini. Uh, there was a little bit of discussion about that one, but we ended up putting it at St. Stephen's because the alternate location was kind of far north on Maine. So felt I felt personally that it might get lost there. So St. Stephen's is really a good location for our art on the move pieces. So that's where that's going, St. Stephen's. And also and just last subject, um, then, the artist is um, also taking work out of there and putting it in and for the convenience sake of not having to move the crane, the welder, and the grinder, that really helps me out on logistics. So thank you, guys. Thank you, gals and guys, for, <laughs> for efficiency sake. That one's pretty awesome. So thanks. It's all about you, Angela. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm sorry. And then, I'm kidding. I know. I'm sorry. Anyway, the last piece which is Molly. There she is. We'll be going on the west side near the theater. And this was pretty close to where Ursa Major, the big giant bear was. But the bear, the bear was on the north side of the breezeway. I think um, Molly's gonna be more on a, on a tree grate. So it'll be closer to the street. Actually, no, the bear was on the tree grate. Is it going to the same spot as the bear was? <clears throat> I think it is. It is. Yeah. So yeah, near the theater on the west side. Any questions? <laughs> Ursa's on the east side, right? Now, now Ursa's on the east side. Yeah. Ursa's original location was on the west side. Ah. So we're going to have a big, big, big day on Monday. Um, it's a big day, actually. Uh, the crane is going to start at the motorcycle at the recycle center. We're going to crane that out. And then we're going to start at St. Stephen's and take out uh, Snow Queen and the pieces that are Sue Quinlan's called Trinity, and then the Annette Coleman piece. And then when Annette arrives, we're gonna take Cactus out of the truck and put Whirling Dervish in the truck. Uh, it's gonna be a real shuffle. It's gonna be really busy. And if, <laughs> with my luck, it'll either snow or it's gonna be blazing hot. <laughs> so um, I imagine the latter, and if you have any time between the hours of nine and two, and you are interested in making sure that spectators don't get hit um, in the noggin, I would welcome you to come. Cindy Tiger, last time, I don't remember who else was there. Someone else was there. I was there. I was there. Well, there was a gal, I think it was Annette Coleman's mother, who almost got hit by the forklift. I was driving the forklift through Roses. And uh, she just really wanted to get an up close picture. So um, anyways, I, I'm not going to send out a sign up genius because it's such a long day. And really, I'll have vests there. But coming and taking pictures and just talking to the public is super helpful. 
Um, so again, Monday starting at nine, um, and we'll pro hopefully end about you know two thirty three. Um, the one that is going to be the most intense and laborious installation that day is going to be protector. Uh, the base is three, 400 pound granite. And then of course you have a 13, 1300 pound piece of marble. Um, and the installation is really interesting. There's a, there's a pin coming out of a plate and the, pl so the plate has to be anchored to the concrete and then the granite goes over the pin and then the marble attaches to the granite. So, um, fast. I think that's fascinating. Um, so anyways, yep. Angela, you're in luck. The forecast for Monday is a high of 71. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, right. I bring it. I'm telling you. I, I told you it's all about Angela. It's all about Angela. You know, right? <laughs> Angela, what about what's rain? The, Any rain in the forecast? Oh, God, please. 26%. So no, what, so that means no rain. What time do you think you're going to arrive at St. Stephen's? Um, the crane will probably roll up between eight forty-five and nine. All of the businesses should have gotten their thumbs up today. Barricade Company comes at seven. Okay. I'll be there at seven oh one. And I'll have just missed them. And then I'll get to move all the things myself because that's how it always happens, right? <laughs> no. And then, so we'll close the, we'll close off the alley. Uh, businesses will know that if they need to go in between the alley, they can move the signs um, and exit the parking lot. Uh, the crane will probably, yeah, 8.45, 9, the crane okay. will post up. And the out will will place him, and then his outriggers should be out by nine fifteen. So at nine fifteen, nobody's going anywhere outside of that that area. Okay. Hopefully. Um, well, I was there for many hours when you installed Ursa Major, and I. So I just want to remind you that I was there for many <laughs> hours. <clears throat> Ursa Major, that was a real, that was a real bear. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so it's seven pieces. It's a lot. In and out. So anytime you have, sorry, I digress. I have a question. What about the 2D piece? What's the, what's the, we're working on it, but I think that it's going to be just fine. Uh, an, an MDF, um, uh, I don't have an example, thin, uh, closet wood. I think that that will be the application with D hooks on the back and then just hanging straight from the D hooks. Um, my bigger concern really is just the, the height. And so I do think it's going to end up being just slightly smaller um because the proportions are a little funny um but it's not a problem so but installation won't be now because he still has to um have it printed and mounted but shortly i mean soon does does he doesn't have an estimated time date we have to figure out that um dimension because i mean so it's more expensive if he if if we make it to size that will look the most proportional on the wall it's more than one piece of MDF mounted together. So there's a seam, um, they come in eight foot sheets, but you can cut it down, which is also fine. Um, but then it's a question of how the print is mounted to the board. So he's investigating the seam. Um, but I, I think it should be pretty pro easy problem solving and to be very fair, I have not nudged him in five days since last week. So yeah, should look nice though. <laughs> and 
And I should say also just on the art on the move quickly, uh, the other pieces are going Molly and the Cala piece that's at the museum are going to be installed on Wednesday. Uh, we will be doing Cala first at, I gotta look at my cheat sheet, uh, 9 a.m., 9 a.m. at the museum. Um, so that's gonna be really quick and easy. I'm actually really interested to see um, that work because all we've seen is a model. So if you have, just wanna bring your coffee and your breakfast at 9 a.m. Um, at the museum, that'd be great. And then Molly is going to meet us at the museum. They're driving up from Fruta. And then we're gonna caravan over to the location on Main and install her. So that'll be like a 10 o'clock. Um, so, yep. And I will send you a reminder. Uh, actually, I'll send you just a schedule of these dates and times. Um, so if you're able to make it, that'd be great. We lost to Holly. Oh, we lost our chair. Okay. We have, we have momentarily lost Holly and I don't see <laughs> her coming. Is. There she is. There she is. <laughs> you didn't change your mind on being chair, did you, Holly? You can't get out of it. I am so sorry. I'm back. I fell out completely. <laughs> My internet must have just fallen right out. My apologies. <laughs> Where did you guys go without me? <laughs> we, we, we didn't even, we kind of looked around and said, uh oh, she changed her mind. No, not at all. I fell off completely. You all just disappeared. So I think we're on shock art. <laughs> shock art um uh since you'll recall we bumped it up to try and get um hooked up with the art walk for may but that's not happening so really those dates were a moot point and a number of artists came back and said hey you bumped up the dates on us do you think you could give us a little bit longer so we i we just extended it um till the 26th and really that uh date doesn't isn't so bad because it uh, will allow the display to be up at Old Town Marketplace for even a little bit longer during the downtown summer on the streets, um, which is every Saturday starting July 3rd through August something. I'm gonna say 21st. Uh, but we will be on display there for about two and a half, maybe three weeks. So starting July 10th. Um, so whereas we were having kind of a closing reception that night um now we're going to do an opening an opening reception that night so dates haven't changed so much just activity um so uh, again i'll send out a sign up genius for volunteers for um, doing some table setup and things like that but it should be a really good time um right now we have some 20 uh submissions Ooh, wow last year we had 40 which was bananas uh, but I think people were bored and in their houses. <laughs> so um, we'll do some more marketing pushes and get that number up and then we'll photograph them and get them online. So um, that's the big stuff that way. Is that pretty close to previous years, the 20 as opposed to the 40? Yeah, uh, last okay. year's participation was significantly more uh, than I, I, and of course it was my first year, so I didn't really look at the number until later. Um, okay. We also did it, we did the whole program a little bit later in the year. Uh, I think artists like the idea of painting in the fall rather than uh, midsummer, which makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not really a problem. So shock art, again, the subcommittee will get together and look at those boxes, options um, from Kevin. Um, we've had a lot of people want their residential boxes uh, painted. And so I've had to have some conversations that way, which are slightly unfortunate, but um, 
Kevin said they're just not an even an option because the way that the staff is trained to see them in a residential situation it's it's not as it's very a pointed situation rather than if one of the um pad mounts goes it's like a whole block that goes out and they know where that box is so whether it's painted or not doesn't make a difference um, but the residential ones are sometimes hard to find um so we're not allowed to paint those um anyway but i, th I think we should still have a uh, a very good turnout and hope and if we want to if y'all decide that you want to up the number of boxes if we have a very strong turnout this year and you decide rather than the five to seven we want to do ten that is completely up to you and we have the funds to do it so yeah so we'll see how they come out and we'll be able to talk about it in july okay that's great all right. Looks like Civic Center land acknowledgement is next on the agenda. Um, so what does any after our, our meeting with Sharice, does anyone have any um, thoughts about Civic Center? I mean, I know that it was a little bit to digest about kind of, um, you know, the precarious nature of that building, but um, that bed is desirable and it, uh, for, for public art, at least from facility standpoint. Um, and I have now run it up the pole of um, communications and some of the staff that work in that building. Does anybody have any feedback or thoughts or ideas now knowing that the flags will come down and fall, they'll be assessed, there won't be any public art in that space um, because we also do have the outdoor place as well if we wanted to start there. I have one question. Um, we're talking about the big pad in the stairwell, yes? I don't have any real ideas. I was just wondering that um, that brick surround that's the stairwell, can that be painted as part of the installation if, if it's appropriate? How do they feel about painting part of the Civic Center? Just, just thinking. I don't know. I can ask that. There's a lot of brick. There's a lot of that brick in that building. Mm -hmm. I like where Cindy's going. Like, what if the artist has a mural along with their piece of art? I was thinking, I was thinking kind of like a diorama or something, if we wanted to put a background in front of whatever installation we put there. I don't know. I, we haven't even discussed what kind of installation, but I was just, I yeah, was just But thinking. it's a good question. Really yeah, good question. It totally is to incorporate it in it. I think that's part of the thing that keeps that building so cold and uninviting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so if we can help break that up through an art installation, that would be really appealing. Well, if we were going to do an art installation, wouldn't we have to do an RFP for it or a request? So we, we before we could do that, we'd have to get an idea. And maybe, I mean, that way, if you talk to the folks that work there um, and do a a multi-purpose, like Cindy was talking about, a diorama or, or a paint, a mural in the back, and then uh, 3D uh, figure in the front to, you know, accentuate each other. So one of the things that we had talked about is that the city is working on going forward with a land acknowledgement. Um, and the museum has been spearheading that. And for those of you who um, might, this might be something new or a new new term for you, a land acknowledgement is a statement of residents within a location recognizing verbally uh, and also symbolically at meetings. So city council, almost like the Pledge of Allegiance uh, for city council, it would be said at the beginning of city council, which acknowledges that we are not the first residents of this land. Um, and 
as appropriate because the Civic Center has been, if you will, the showcase visually for, uh, I'm going to say the word paraphernalia, but I say that very gently, if you will, um, <laughs> of, of objects that are representative of our connections with our other sister cities, that this could be an opportunity for an artist to be informed by the land acknowledgement. And then that could be the theme by which an artist takes off. And um, if we put the parameters, right, a uh, facility says, yes, you can paint. I know that there's electricity, which I think that that's a huge one. Um, there's a lot of, I think a lot of creativity, things that we might not even expect could come out of it. So I have the land acknowledgement to share with you. Um, I don't really want to read it, but at the same time, I only have it in an email now. So you're just going to have to forgive me if you're like me and want to be reading it on your own. Uh, hold on just a second. Because clearly I can't. I've got to lose you for a minute. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I should have had this ready to go. Um, boogers. Sorry. But, um, doggone it. Here we go. Here we go. Um, so I should say also uh, that this land acknowledgement is in draft form. We have had, and I say we, the museum has had consultation uh, by a leader in the Northern Arapaho community uh, who has been working also with the Denver Art Museum. Um, the city of Denver has a very lovely land acknowledgement. And uh, so here it is. Can you see that Laurel, I see you. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see it? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it says, um, we acknowledge that Longmont sits on the traditional territory of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Ute, and other indigenous peoples. We honor the history and the living and the living and spiritual connection that the first peoples have with this land. It's our commitment to face the injustices that have hap that happened when the land was taken and to educate our communities, ourselves and our children to ensure that they do not happen again. Hmm. And um, again, I'll, I will share this with you, but uh, it is a draft. Susie Hidalgo Faring, who is, serves as a councilwoman for the Museum Advisory Board has taken it to council and it is scheduled to be on their docket. Um, they may have edits, they may have changes, it may change. Uh, once it is adopted, I think that a uh, city will have a policy by which um, we, how we utilize this land acknowledgement, but it certainly seems appropriate for the Civic Center um, to me. So mm -hmm. they've come a long way with this. Um, so I wonder for the Civic Center project, um, if next steps is to get that city, feed, the city employee feedback um, with these ideas in mind, and then understanding from Sharice a good number um, that was applied towards the Civic Center. Again, um, too, it's the ses I can never say it, sesquicentennial, 150th year mm -hmm. of Vermont. So that that's great. Is also lovely. Sesquicentennial. <laughs> sequin. No, you're Sesquin. thinking along the lines of like an artwork to re review the past and to the future of Longmont, something like that, to to celebrate our past and, and hopefully a, a more diverse future or something like that. Can I, can I ask a question? Have we decided to take down the banners that are in the entryway of the Civic Center? Are those banners going to stay? Are they going to be refurbished? Are they going to be cleaned? Are they going to be re-dyed? What's, what's the Question. deal? So um, Charisse visited us last month to explain mm -hmm. a, uh, more eloquently than I have been able to say that because of the nature of the building and the improvements that have to be made to the skylights, they officially 
have to come down. So the contractor said that um, they do have to come down for the work that they have to do. So instead of hiring a conservator to look at them in situ, in place, up on a ladder, uh, we will have the conservator, we will pay the conservator to come and do an assessment in the fall. Um, and then that person will look at it and then it will come back to the subcommittee with the dollar amount that it would take to either restore them um, versus its value. And then the subcommittee will make a recommendation of whether or not those parameters or that those findings fit within the DS session policy. Mm -hmm. They will make a formal recommendation to I you. See. So that said, I know it's it's a long road, but it should be because it's a really important um, aspect of someone's artwork, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, because of um, the the facility, they have they have to come down. So we're just going to be more efficient in just waiting until fall rather than having the conservator look at them now. Um, if I were if I were to guess, looking at the work that Holly and Noah did um, of the conservator the last time she looked at them in 2009, I would imagine that the cost to refurbish or bring them back to life is going to be extensive. And then it is a question of whether or not um, what 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 which avenue to take from there. So uh, I think that that will it'll come back up in the fall. I have a question, two questions. Retaining to the land acknowledgement. Um, as people are planning for making this an official part of the city council meetings or whatever, um, is anyone concerned about people who will raise objections or people who may have a problem with that? And is there a strategy in place to deal with that? And second question is, um, if we're talking about an artwork that somehow reflexes, um, can we, should we specify that the, that the artist be a, uh, from an indigenous group? Um, I, uh, what happened? I Sorry. Um, I can speak to the first question, which is luckily that is um, city council's uh, prerogative and reviewing land acknowledgement, considering on behalf of the community, receiving feedback from the community, fielding any sort of um, question, concern, excitement, thrill, um, hatred, and, and city policy will then trickle down um, of how it will be uh, um, for us. I think the important um, piece and on the indigenous on the indigenous front, really, uh, I think that that's I, I have to look into that. Um, I think we have to give all people, no matter race, creed, um, an opportunity to apply for any RFQ. Mm -hmm. ever. Um, I, I, I can just see. If, if the artist is not uh, themselves uh, from an indigenous group, objections being raised then by people who are, that once again, their culture and their history is being exploited by people who are not of their, of their uh, ethnicity. Sure, and I think that that's where the sister cities connection is the most important aspect of this project, is to be assured that the sister cities group um, our, the Northern Arapaho tribe are consulted and actually on the selection committee and participate in the public artwork commission. Uh, so I, I think this is just me. I think that that's how that happens, but, uh, um, in, in these divisive times, only open can, for conversation. Right? In these divisive times, I can see both of these creating problems for somebody. It's always something. We lost Holly again. That's what my mother always used to say, Laurel. You bet. <laughs> Every time it gets difficult, she just leaves. <laughs> um, so I will say too, um, 
for next steps, we do have a number of people who are sitting around this table now. Uh, Teresa, I know that you had sent me a note about being included in that as well. And because we can meet back in person, um, uh, Carmen Ramirez, who is our culture, is a huge asset to this town. If you don't know her, um, cultural broker for the city, uh, is really excited about this partnership. Is excited about the way in which um, the way in which we can include the tribe in the commission of the artwork. So I think um, I don't. I'm not scared, and I think. Carmen would say if we if we don't start because we're worried about what someone's going to stay say then that's maybe not um, I'm not suggesting cities and that collaborative effort. I'm not suggesting that we should that we should hesitate to do this. I'm just concerned about being prepared. Sure. So does any um, so does anyone have any objection? I think. Um, Next step is that the group needs to meet. Um, if city council has any feedback about the land acknowledgement from boards and commissions that you, the subcommittee would be the body by which um, would speak on behalf of art in public places, if everyone's agreeable on that one. Um, and then we just go, and then I'm just gonna start running it up the pole because once it reaches Harold's office, the rubber meets the road, right? Okay. Hi, Holly. I'm sorry. We're like, <laughs> because every time it gets tough, you leave us. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I think that's an excellent idea though. Um, do, do we need to agree that we need a subcommittee or how, how do we want to proceed with that? We already have one. Oh, you um, did? Yeah, I just didn't, um, I didn't want to go forward any, any further before the land acknowledgement um, it, it was passed by the Museum Advisory Board, who's been working with Indigenous folk to inform this land acknowledgement. Um, so now that that has passed and it is at least on, it's somewhere in the queue uh, for City Council, um, that we're prepared to go forward, whatever that looks like with this project. It's, okay. it's the sister cities. Um, task force or, or committee, right? Who's who's on that task force? Who is, uh, oh man, Peter. Just curious, but it's not Lisa, a Lisa, Jennifer, yeah. who else is on um, the 150th, not, not the colorful poetry, but the 150th, Pamela. Yeah. I think there's four. And is it Randy? I'm sorry to volunteer you. <laughs> I will, I will look back at my notes, but I have it. And, and, and also, I'm so sorry, we're getting off track. Um, City Council did approve the new board members uh, last Tuesday. So we'll reshuffle the deck when it comes to task forces. So we will revisit this very shortly. But um, I will get that on the list. Okay. Sorry, Holly, you were saying, is that so that sounds like a good plan to you? That does sound like a good plan. Um, yeah, and I, I, guess, I guess, yeah, that sounds like a good good plan to go forward with. Um, so are we moving on to Boston Bridge? Can I just, uh, uh, if you're on the task force, then Angela, do you just email us for certain times to get together? Okay. Yeah, and maybe if I'm, I'm vaccinated, fully vaccinated and happy to, meet Me in too. person. Me too. However, I, every, anyone is feeling comfortable, I'm happy to wear a mask. I'm happy to put tables, but I think for this exercise, meeting at the space um, will be helpful. So I will send it out to you. I'm not asking if you are vaccinated, you, but I am. I am. And um, if you are comfortable meeting in person in that space, um, great. And if you are uh, abiding by, of course, all laws, um, but if not, then we'll meet another way. So yeah. I'll send that out. No, I'm zoomed out. This is not even zoomed. I want people.
I think you're on mute, Angela. Now I'm talking to myself and didn't think you guys needed to hear that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Boston Bridge. Okay. Oh, oh. Here it comes. Here it comes. So while I look, um, I spoke to our friend Alan Burning about Boston Bridge. I received the elevations last month. As you will recall, we ended up tabling it because our meeting went so long. And it actually was a good thing because it gave me a little more time to understand the financial implications of, and logistics of a relief sculpture. And I'm not sorry to say that it's really intense. Um, oh, I know why my problem, I know what my problem is. Um, it can be very expensive. Concrete is not a terribly sustainable material and it doesn't make our resiliency and sustainability uh, commission with the city very happy. Uh, I think that there maybe in the future could be something alternative that we could use and could work with. Um, but the monies that we were looking at for how much it could cost for a single panel uh, was a lot. Um, and when I say a lot, I can't even tell you a range because it varies so much. Uh, Cindy Tiger pointed out something very astute, which was down in T-Rex, where if you've ever gone through there near DU's campus, it's lovely. Anyways, uh, it's a repeated pattern. So it does look different everywhere you go uh, or as you, as you travel, but it's, a, but it's a repeat, almost like a textile, right? And so how they were probably physically or financially able to do it was it wasn't one um, composition that then you had to make multiple molds of. It, they made four molds and they used them over and over again. So needless to say, um, I, I really don't have a, a good number. And so they're at 90% design. And I talked to Alan and I said, okay, well, we still are really excited about doing, oh shoot, now you can't see it, can you? Uh, we really are excited. And he said, okay, can you, Laurel, I'm looking at you and Peter. Give me a thumbs up if you see an a, 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 a engineering drawing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so this is um this is the abutment art sketch that came uh recently. It's the most recent uh version. And so this is gonna be clear as mud to some of you. Um and because of the, the orientation of that bridge, there isn't a perfect way of saying what north and south is. Um so if you are headed on what will be the path or you're at left hands, um, they're, they're um, like pat patio, their outdoor area. Right. right. The place that is highlighted is going to be the most visible and is the most ideal for our partners in development to be um, considered for a public art piece. That said, it's 513 square feet. Uh, it's lovely, huge amount of space. Um, so rather than trying to fit on what I'd say a, a square peg in a round hole is I think we should go back to the basics. And if on the sesquicentennial, we are interested in looking at a mural for this location, it will be highly visible. Um, that's what I would like to suggest for moving forward. We can execute it this year. We know what we have to do. It'll be brand new concrete. Uh, we'll have good primer and we'll certainly do the graffiti coating over it. Um, so I, I don't think it's so much of bad news, but it also is just not turning out the way that I thought it was going to be. So does anybody have any comments or thoughts um, on, on this project if we continue that way. I have one question, which is from the, from the other side of the river. Can you see any of the abutment? Is there any place, you're muted again. 
if there's any place on the other side, of the, I mean, isn't there like a trailer park there? I'm not really sure. Um, well, I think there's river, mural, and then the bike path. Right. And but on the other the, side of the river. That, that I'm just wondering is, if we ought to consider oh, yeah. whether or not we need something on the other side on the left-hand brewery side that we wouldn't be able to see from there, but does there some, need to be something on that side of the... Is that where the landscape company with the big rocks is? I, yeah. think, they're, I think they're on the other side. They're west of it. They're, 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 they're yeah. west of that. They're building. west, and there's they're a west. river road there or something, and they're on the other side of that. But between uh, the river road and the river, there's a trailer park. Uh, I think I it's wonder, farther south. I don't, I'm, I just, don't. I'm just wondering if we even need to consider whether or not it needs to be a double-sided, a two-sided thing, or if just one side is fine. Well, my ask. impression driving by there is that there are not any um, areas where that would be easily visible because- Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking too, Peter. I think the, that the road, it's not road visually accessible south. from it's, the other side. There's, but there's I just another wanted... road off of it, and there's quite a distance between where the bridge is and where the trailer park starts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's not visually accessible, so I think that we probably don't, but I just wondered if we should consider that. So when I asked Alan, I said that what we were looking at was when he came back to us with the drawings was the area that was going to be the most visu uh, visually as appealing. Um, and he said, well, aside from putting something on top of the bridge, like Main Street, which that ship sailed long, long before I was even here, right? So structurally, we're past that, um, that this was the this was the best option. But okay. I will ask. OK, well, um, I just wanted to make sure all our bases were covered. That's all. So are we thinking a mural then there? The other option is something like a mosaic, but that adds weight, um, which uh, uh, that would be something I would have to ask. There is like this kind of massive desire for murals and because we have the 150th anniversary, I think that an artist could do a bang up job and make it very local. Uh, we, could al we could also engage or we have engaged in the past um, Front Range, Front Range's mural class. They've done some beautiful things. Yep, we could totally go straight to Front Range Community College and get an IRA underway with John Cross. Yep, if you want. If you guys aren't familiar with the one, there's one um, at the overpass or underpass at Oscar Blues, that's like, right at Hover there, it's beautiful. It's like a tree that just comes out. Uh, just a quick thought. Um, from my understanding, Left Hand is supposed to be building an amphitheater right there or across from the, where we're talking about this mural would be. So I just think maybe we wanna, I, I'm not sure if this is just rumored, but I do work for Oscar Blues Brewery. So I, am, I like usually have pretty good connections. That's what's going on with Left Hand. So I, I just wanted to say that like, I feel like that mural also could be visible from a, possible, a potential amphitheater that's gonna sit right on that river. So just a little bit more in depth, cause I think that might be what you're talking about, Cindy, as a cross from where the mural would be, would be where I'm assuming is the amphitheater is going. Awesome. <clears throat> so next steps is I could take a look at cost per square foot for 513 square feet of high and low um, for you if you're interested in mural uh, task force folks. This would be RSVP folks, but again, we'll shuffle the deck shortly. So if anybody is <clears throat> just really interested in getting on this one, we can do it next month after we get our new commissioners. Yeah, it, it sounds to me like we maybe need to just do a kind of a reassessment of the area itself. Um, and I, I do believe that some of the RSB people have are, are commissioners that recently um, transitioned off. 
I know I'm, I believe I'm still on that committee, but I would be happy to, for us to, to relook at it and just see what might, um, might be best. I think that the, um, the task force should contact the um, left hand brewery headquarters there across the street and ask them if they're planning an amphitheater and what, what uh, orientation it's going to be and tell them we're planning a mural there and we would just want to make sure it's visible or not. If it's not going to be visible at all, if they're going to block off that whole area, which I don't think they would because river. Um, but we should, we should just double check with them to see what their plans are. Um, if you don't mind, and this is where I'm, I'm out of practice because we haven't done this before. Um, let me just check with my city partners first uh, because I don't want to make cold calls and be like, I'm with the city and I have questions where my city partners may already know the skinny and just haven't shared with me. So I'll start with Alan, talk to him about reassessing and see if I can get some maybe aerial maps or something and then ask him secondly if he has connections at left hand and if it's less that we may contact them on our own and task force will just go from there. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Am I missing anything? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So are you moving on to maintenance reports? Maintenance and reports and nature's way. Maintenance. So we'll start with the maintenance report. So um, our Eileen did have her baby three weeks early. So she's not here. Give this, but I'll do my best. So uh, you have all been diligently, not all, but you, a lot of you have been filling out those reports. Thank you very much. And so Eileen went through and assessed the ones that were in poor condition. And then the ones that were fair, that had something um, that was hairy, scary on them. So, um, Peter identified bird bath as well as the Macintosh Lake. Pam, you identified something. Um, I think that it's nature's way. One piece of it, Susan, you said 101 faces was in poor condition, which I imagine that that's because a lot of them are missing. And then, um, and then Cindy went back and looked at nature's way again. So I have some images, um, but I think we just need to kind of go down the list um, of these pieces. Um, our bronze man did come back and uh, he is within our budget for the bronze remediations. They were less than $100 for those added um, guardian and the other one. So we're in good shape that way. Um, we have 20,000 budgeted annually for remediation, but we can always change that and up that, especially in a dire situation. So um, should I start with, well, maybe we'll start with, start with bird bath, Peter. And I'm putting you on the spot here, but I can read the report if you want me to. Well, that's, that's the one that was not there. Right? That's the Tim up in one that is not. Was, was removed over the winter or something? Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Poor because it's absent. <laughs> it's, it's either been stolen or removed. No, I think that that was the removed one. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I, when I did that last fall, it was, I think, I did, I did not see that. Right. Okay. So that's one. Uh, if that's, yeah, I assume that must be back now. I, I could go back there and look at it again. I don't think so. Um, that's the one when I reached out to, it's at Rough and Ready Park. Um, actually, Joanne's, uh, she lives by that piece. Um, that's the one that Risk had in a uh, barn because the pond froze over and the kids were hanging on it and then they fixed it and then they had to remove it again. So clearly that is not in the collections file, but oh, yeah, we'll need to update that. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Um, okay. The next one, Susan Horowitz, um, 101 faces. I and looked for that one too. I want to know where those are. 
So there are some on the Main Street Bridge. When you're on Main Street driving by the driving over the river, looking sort of toward the museum, there are three or four there on the bridge. I don't know where all the rest of them went, but I know that there are three or four there on the bridge. They used to go <clears throat> down over towards whatever that street is that, well, Pratt that goes by Burlington School and the bike path that goes on. There were faces all along those trees um, and there, I couldn't find any. Yeah. I couldn't find any either um, when, I, when I looked. Yeah. Jim. And so um, Eileen's notes say that the collection file doesn't have a map. Um, there are some installation notes, but it's, there were, they were never, back then, of course, they didn't do like GPS locations or anything like that. That said, uh, because of the remediations that's happened along the St. Brain, if we want to contact the artist and talk about recasting, um, reinstalling, now that uh, that area is prepared for a hundred year flood, um, we could investigate that if you're interested. Um, just a thought. The last time I saw them was before 2013, was before the flood. Yeah. Um, so I... I would be in favor, I enjoyed them when they were there. I would be in favor of contacting the, the artist and see if they can be recast or if they were all handmade, maybe not, but I, I, it doesn't hurt to reach out. Do we have any pre-flood Im pre images of what it used to look like? A couple that have been used for publicity, but they're not high resolution. One of them's used in the bike map, was up in a tree. Um, yeah, so the answer is no. And again, this was part of the collection file uh, project that happened over COVID. So that entire hard copy file has now been digitized. Um, and Eileen has gone through, you know, she's done a really good job of getting that all squared away. So um, I would dare say that chances are you know, there's not many left. And if we did have them recast, we could also make a point to when they're installed, we geo tack them and then we'll know, right? Um, and then we could take it to the next level and put it on an app and, you know, so, I mean, but we can also table this for now um, because if the condition is that they're, they're, not, they're not in bad shape, they're just not present, um, on the maintenance front, you know, it. I mean, between your priorities, I don't know where that falls. It's not really a maintenance issue. <laughs> yeah. If possible, the artist might remember where she put it, or they put it. You know. I think it's a fairly safe bet. We lost several of them, if not most of them, in the flood. That left-hand uh, creek got pretty high. And a lot of them were in the um, in the reeds there. Uh -huh. So I think that uh, I think that it would be nice if we reached out to the artist and asked, "Is it a her?" Asked her, um, yeah, that, him, I him, her, yeah. if if they'd be interested in revisiting that. We would probably have to repay. We'd probably have to pay her again. Of of course. Yeah. Uh, Here so sure we want to make a. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Susan. I'm pretty sure it's uh, who it, I think it is, um, and um, it's a male. Um, also, um, some concerns that I had when they originally all went up um, was the size. I felt like because so many were on the other side of the bike path there, they were difficult to see. So I don't know if that's something we'd like to reconsider that they be re done in a little bit bigger size. Um, I mean, I got the idea that they were kind of hidden figures in these trees, but they were pretty hidden, <laughs> a lot of them. So I don't know, it's just something to, when you have that conversation or we get there. Um, Maybe fewer and bigger. I'm sorry? Maybe fewer and bigger. Yeah. Instead of 101, we could do yeah. 21. <laughs>
So I think um, I can continue with the maintenance so you can see everything that we have to consider here. And then uh, depending upon how you're feeling, we can make motions of about actions um, and assign a task force if necessary. Does that sound like a good way forward? Yeah. Okay. I have a question, Angela. Um, I had one other that I looked at that and maybe it's already something's happened to it, but it's out at sandstone. It's the hands that come out of the cement. Yeah. yeah. And those had been, all the nails were crayoned over. That's it, new from when I looked at it, because I saw that was, that's at sandstone, right? Right. Yeah. By the soccer fields. Yeah. yeah. I, I I've, looked looked at that. I've, I've looked at that two years in a row and it's got a big, a big uh, chunk out of one of the fingernails. Yeah. I, it, I and mean, some of the places where the bike racks are mounted around, they're a little, they're yeah. not, none of them are unstable. None of them are wobbly or anything, but they're beginning to look a little worn down there. A little shabby. And it's such a great piece. I really think it's a wonderful thing. Um, I, I'm just voicing that I'd love to see that part of the um, maintenance happen to that right away. Okay. There's so many people there. Okay. That's called a merging hand. Uh, it, we had it as fair, so that's why it didn't rise to the top. But uh, yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's very visible. Uh, it's it's functional. Um, okay. So that's on the list as well. Okay. Okay, and then I think, uh, hold on. And then nature and nature's way. Nature's way was the big one that multiple folks who visited it um, as well. I believe this or not. Um, I talked to Lauren just this week, and she had some tiles. So I actually have some of the tiles. Um, oh, and then the zinc piece. I'm sorry, and the Charlotte zinc piece around Macintosh. So those are the two last ones. Do we want to talk about the Macintosh zinc piece? Um, Charlotte zinc. I don't, what is the name of that? piece? The mile markers. Mile markers, yeah. Oh. Well, we, we were talking at the beginning of the meeting. One of them is bent way over. Okay. Um, I, th I thought I sent you a picture of that at the time that I walked around the lake. You may have put it in the report as a fair, not a, um, oh, okay. but that's okay. Um, but I yeah, didn't. I thought I remembered one of them having had some paint sprayed on it or something, but not. again, I'm not absolutely certain about that. Oh, there it is. Um, landmarks, it's called landmarks. Landmark. Um, okay. All right, so landmarks. Okay, and then, um, okay, and then Cindy, if you wanna talk about nature's way, I can show some pictures. I can. I Let's can. see the pictures. Let's bring up the pictures, Angela. There we go. Um, That's not for you. Okay, here we go. Here, here we go. I think after a year, I'd be better at this. Okay, how's that? I see Peter. Peter, okay. the fish. This um, is inside the fish's mouth is a water fountain that does not function. I do not know what <laughs> to make it function. Um, you can see here on this loop um, out of the, the body part of it, it's missing tons of tiles. It's missing tons of tiles on the head and it's missing tons of tiles on the, on the tail. Um, it's, if we replace the tiles, I don't know how they were put in first. They would definitely be some kind of a hazard to little kids, but I mean, I, I don't know how they would be reattached. It looks to me like they were re they were attached by pushing them into the cement and letting the cement hard around, harden around them. There's cracks. There's two pieces in this 
group that are made out of this sandstone colored cement. And both of those pieces have some significant cracks. This is, this is a moderate crack, I would say, compared to the other piece. But you can see all the missing tiles. Mm -hmm. Aren't, aren't there also some missing plaques? Yes, there are, but this plaque is here. Right, right. But when I looked at that, I remember they were missing plaques. You could see where it was supposed to be, and it was just gone. I pass this sculpture all the time, and my thought about it is that with COVID, I don't think that the water fountain, uh, I don't think it will ever get turned on or not, not you know, this year or whatever, because, because of COVID, nobody's using water fountains. Yeah. Well, I also want to say that this whole series, Nature's Way series, is right on Left Hand Creek, and I have no idea what the flooding did to the um, infrastructure of this piece yeah. or, or any of the pieces. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go past this one often also, and it's just so shabby looking, deteriorated. Um, it's not a... This piece is completely non-functional. It spins, that's all. Whoops, <laughs> back again. But the bench... Go ahead, Susan. The chair that is there, that sculpture, do you know what I... The, the, yeah, there's, there's, the several, there's several chairs. Yeah. And um, uh, I met a, a, a woman and her two children that have their lunch there all the time. They love to sit on that bench. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was just so great. They really enjoy it. Okay, so this one's called I Spy yeah. and it's hello. And it doesn't, it's filled up. There's something in it. You can't see through it. You can't see through it either way. You can spin it around. You can, you can, you know, crank it up and back, but there's no possible way to see through it. It's filled with something. And it's starting to deteriorate at the bottom a little bit. I don't know if we can fix this one. Um, I don't know. I do not know what would be involved in fixing this, but it is completely non-functional. It's just a pretty red and yellow oh, thing that spins. And even that it's starting, the red, as you can see, is getting pretty loose at the bottom and the yellow part at the top is really faded. It's not bright and shiny anymore. Sorry, I interrupted you, Susan, when you were talking about the, the fish and I skipped over to I Spy. Oh no, it, it's fine. I was just saying it's pretty shabby looking because it's missing so many tiles and everything that Cindy referenced to it. Um, it's not a nice representation for art and pepper places. Um, it just looks like it's been left to kind of water away. Yeah. Where, where is that located? It's along, it's along Missouri Avenue between Kanemoto Park and Left Hand Park. It's on, it's between the sidewalk and the river and the creek, Left Hand Creek. Um, and there's five pieces in this installation, five separate pieces in this installation. Okay. Well, there's, there's two of them that, that frame the cross yes. street there, right? Yes, and hopefully we'll get to those. Oh, shoot. Ah, um. Hey, so there one I can talk about is that bat chair. Um, it's in it's in pretty good shape. It's a really nice big bench, the bat bench, and it has a plaque and it's really nice. It's starting to fade a little bit. The powder coating is starting to lose its shine. But that's the only thing wrong with it. It's it's pretty good. This one right here, this oh. bat bench. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get a little bit faded. So you can kind of see where it's just, but it's um, all these things, the backs of this, the sidewalk is south of this bench so that anything, it gets a lot of sun. So why they're fading, I'm sure. What else have you got for me, Angela? Mm -hmm. 
Do you have my reports there? Because I there was one at you're talking about missing tiles. There's one at Stephen Day Park that's missing tiles too. Oh. Go. We also had a bunch of metal sculptures in, I don't, we call it the barn park. It's Southwest Longmont um, off of Fordham. And we talked about powder coating those at some point. So I wonder if the bench, is the bench painted, that bat bench, or is it? No, it looks powder coated to me. Yeah, so I think we have a lot of powder coating to do. Okay, this is the one that's um, part of the, the two on either side of Bowen Street, north and south of Bowen, which runs, no, east and west of Bowen, which runs sort of north and south. And this has some, this is tall and it has some serious cracks in it. Okay, I don't know. Some of them, these are bad. Yeah. Um, they're bad at the bottom. There's one that's really bad. Uh, I do not know if these can be patched, repaired. I don't know. I don't know. This This is, again, that sandstone um, cement or whatever it is. It's missing mm -hmm. a few tiles, These, but these tiles are just really rather randomly placed. They don't make a design like they do on the fish. But it's got some pretty serious cracking. I think there's a steel inside that the cement is around. So I think think that it's not likely to fall over necessarily but it's got some it's got some serious uh cracking issues and that's that's not from anything but i think age age and weather age and weather yeah so um as you all may know powder coating in colorado uv are not friends. And the good thing is that since the 90s when powder coating was really a, a relatively inexpensive way to get color on both aluminum and steel, a lot um, color has come a long way, particularly automotive paint. And so automotive paint, as you may have seen, uh, not only is just shiny and bright and slick, but is also matte too. And the other good thing about it, the same way that you take care of your car, the same way that you would wax automotive paint into steel, uh, is the same way that you can care for something now going forward. So as we conceive of how uh, we go about preserving these pieces and taking care of them, we may want to consider alternative methods for color. Uh, we may be introducing artists to new things. Um, powder coating into the future, if we remove, because you have to remove them, you have to sand them down, put them through the powder coating machine, the powder coat goes on, and then you reinstall. Um, there might be ways that we can look at caring for these things in situ in the future. So, but um, I do agree that I think not only from a st stability perspective, but also from um, just an aging and kind of a eyesore perspective, this is, this is pretty serious. I have a question. Um, when I was looking up the Nature's Way, it says that there's a kinetic arch, which I'm assuming is that last one that has the leaf things on the top. Does kinetic mean it's supposed to move? It It's not moving. I can't figure out how it would move. There was one more piece there, the leafy chairs. Okay, this, this uh, red one is, or orange one is pretty faded. Um, the biggest problem with these is they're starting to get little bits of uh, powder coating chipped off, little holes, little uh, scrapes on them, stuff like that. If there's four chairs, and also this is one that doesn't have a plaque at all. So I don't know what, I don't know what it's really called. I have no idea. I just was calling it leafy chairs because they look like leaves. 
The other thing is, see, well, that's just paint or that's a sticker, I think, that just needs to be scraped off. But, um, but there are other there are other little problems with them. The other thing is that the the explanation, the description of it in the artwork archive, is um, surrounded by an aroma garden, and the original picture it has a couple of little trees and bushes all around them. Well, that has suffered serious attrition. There's no more little trees. There's only a few plants back there. Um, I don't know that it can really be called an aroma garden anymore. So you can see the scrapes on this one, right down to the metal. Mm -hmm. There, there was a, a resident that lives across the street along Missouri, and he used to take care of all of those beautiful um, iris plants and, and all right along that the sidewalk. And, you know, and it was just a resident that really took care of this garden around here. And, um, and he's since moved, you know, there's nobody taking care of it in terms of uh, private residence. It's, it's a city thing. But, um, but that guy really took care of it for years. <clears throat> well, is, is, shouldn't this be, I don't know, should this be the parks department around this sort of thing? It's not really in a park. But you can see there used to be, there's two empty holes on the side. There used to be a big, a little yeah. tree behind the yellow one and yeah. one in between the blue and the red one mm -hmm. and no plaque. So I don't know what it's really called. So I believe that this is still part of nature's way. I yes, think I do too. I think it's a multi-component piece, which, um, you know, in, in a collection file, you have the name and then there's component you know, ABC, and then even of that, then it's broken down into numbers. So, um, so we need to do that. Um, it looks like it's on an easement and an easement would fall within the purview of the city, but that's not necessarily to say that landscaping does. Um, another example is the Roth Rock Park, uh, south end of Kensington, where we have um, Petit Jardin right now of, of Charlotte Zinks or on the move piece. There's a lovely memorial rose garden there. Um, and when we installed, it uh, didn't look very good. And then someone came through and cleaned it up. Um, I, I sent a note, but I don't know who did it. Um, so I think for our purposes, removing aroma garden out of the description makes sense. But um, when it comes to landscaping, I can ask, but I don't know what that will look like. Uh, meantime, it, the paint looks more stable to me, and I think that Eileen would agree with me. Uh, it's not falling apart. The the bolts at the ground look secure. Um, it doesn't look like if anybody's sitting on it that they're going to get hurt. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any burrs around where the the paint. No, it's just it's it's just it's just something to keep our eyes on because if the paint chips off more, you'll start to get rust, yeah. and then it gets to be more of an ordeal. Um, so, so that said, uh, we have a number of things on the docket as related to maintenance. Of course, again, our, our, our bronze, uh, came out looking really good and that is under control. Uh, 101 faces, emerging hand at sandstone, uh, the landmarks piece at Macintosh, and then this nature's way, both the, the kinetic not moving arch and the water fountain with missing tiles. So and uh, the I spy that just either the, needs to go and the I spy, which is also a part of Nature's Way. Okay. Um, so so those Nature's Way pieces is going to be all one artist. So we could get um, we could start just contacting artists, um, get maybe a task force for each of these pieces. Um, and start looking at what dollar figures could be, or we could prioritize them and make decisions that way. It's completely up to you what you think that the best methodology for, for movement is, so. I think it, I think because we're starting to look at a larger volume of maintenance needs that it may make, make sense just to start to prioritize. And it, is it, 
is it necessary, do you think, that we at this point make sure that there's nothing um, in that maintenance uh, group that is a, a safety issue? Because that would be certainly the first priority. It sounds like some of the nature's way, there was a piece that was coming up that had a lot of cracks. I mean, there may be some risk involved with safety for a couple of those. Um, so they may just need to take a higher priority at this point, unless and anybody can make suggestions on if there's any other ideas that people may have. Um, but if it's safety related, that probably needs to just be at the top of the list. I think that what Peter said about the one at McIntosh Lake where it was bent over, I think that uh, that should be a priority because that's just more damage is just waiting to happen there. It needs to be fixed. Um, the I Spy one, it's not hurting anybody. You can't utilize it for what it was created for, but it's not, it's not a danger to anyone. It can be lower priority. Okay. So um, I will contact Charlotte. Is anybody interested on being uh, on the McIntosh Lake Charlotte Zinc Land Marks Task Force? Susan, Pam? Um, I, I would, but I can't, I, I can't walk all the way around right now, so. Okay, well, do you want to just be included on the emails? Sure, sure, that would be great. Because I, I used to walk around it all the time and I kept my eye on those, so. Okay. Um, and then what about the nature's way? Again, I spy the water fountain and the two arches are very likely all the same artist. Um, yeah. So I'm just- They are, they, they're all by them. Tim- Up them. Tim- Waters, maybe something oh. like that. Walters, Waters or Walters? Yeah. He's on. Like Does he yeah. serve on city council? No, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I there. I took pictures of the plaques, so it's right on the plaques, and they're all by the same artist. Okay. Got it. Uh, so who's I'm interested in being on that task force? Sorry. I'm there. I'm there all the time. Okay. Easy for me. I'd be happy to be on that task force. I would like to as well, Tali. Super duper. What, okay. what, is the, what is the piece of Stephen Day Park that I reported on? It had missing tiles too. Yes, I've seen that. It's That's really bad. It's right near an elementary school. So I think that they come over and pick the pieces off. It could be. There's, there's a map and there's seats yeah. around this little plaza. And then there's some yeah. pieces that, have that are supposed to have tiles on them. I did. I looked at that last year and it has a lot of tiles missing and okay. yeah, they're, they're like a landscapes for things that you can see in the mountains. Mm -hmm. so it's coming back to me. Oh, um, that is the piece that they contacted me in the paper about. And we were in the times call last month. Um, they're the benches. Um, kind of. Yeah. Yes. And it's the geo, um, it's the pointing markers. Uh, one's pointing at Meeker and one's pointing to where uh, Big Thompson and Left Hand come together and then they have coordinates. Um, and they, the, and the little, the little, if you want to call them benches, the little steps. Yes. At the top, they have sort of a little uh, uh, map, three dimensional map of the thing that they're pointing at. Right. Okay. Um, well, there's, there's those that are along the path, and then at the far east end of the park is this little plaza that has the map. Yeah. On the on the, and there are pieces on that, that that have lost many of their tiles. I mean, they're obviously sort of they run down looking because there's so many tiles missing. Again, just like just like the ones at Nature's Way. Okay. I forgot what those are called, but. Um, Okay, so we'll we'll prioritize zinc. I'll make that phone call and and contact first. Then we'll get nature's way up and going, and then we'll prioritize the Stephen Day Park piece number three. Um, mm -hmm. And again, next month once we get our new commissioners, we'll reshuffle the deck on both maintenance and um, 
task forces. So if there's something that you're interested in uh, looking at, just write it down and we'll get there. I know that that was a laborious and maybe not fun exercise. I recognize that maintenance is not always the fun thing. Um, Mario Echevarria, his uh, um, curb, his mower curb should be going in. Um, you would be surprised that the parks department isn't excited about putting concrete curbs in, but it's the only way to keep from um, happening what happened previously. So that should be coming about too this year. Angela, uh, when I was on the artwork archive, there are lots and lots and lots of pieces that are not on that archive. Yep. <laughs> so, Eileen, so Eileen is going through all the collection files. There are pictures of some things. There are not pictures of other things. Um, that's one of the reasons that we're doing these exercises, but um, our work archive does not merge with our collections database. Uh, so you have to manually go in and, and make those changes. So um, we can also add to maintenance if you want to refer to artwork archive, look at the description and rewrite one. Um, yep, there's a lot of updating to do, lots. I'm all ear to strategies. There's, I mean, if we could get a list of the ones that aren't, that need pictures that aren't on the archive, I'd be happy to go around and take pictures. Sure. Okay. Let's talk offline and we'll make a, a strategy, maybe working backwards, newest to missing to updating. Okay. Anybody else interested in taking pictures? Oh, I'd take pictures. Pam? Mm-hmm. I'd take pictures. All right, I'm gonna call you the Artwork Archive Task Force. All right, I, again, I know that that's not fun, so, um, but. It'll be a lot more fun when it's only 70 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Are we ready to move on to our next topic? I think that might be our upcoming Creative Culture AIPP workshop, the, the Commission Impossible. And most of you probably received your invite to this already. It is the Ryan Corrigan workshop that is very likely going to turn into an annual type of workshop that is related to project planning. And that is coming up next Saturday, I believe. And it's going to be from 8.30 to 12.30. Um, this, did everybody receive their invite for that? <clears throat> was I talking and no one was, list, was able to hear me? No, we got it. Um, if, if you didn't receive it or it fell in your spam, it's also attached to your email for this agenda. And it's the 26th. So not this upcoming Saturday, but the one, not Juneteenth, but the one following the 26th. Following. Yeah, the following Saturday. And I believe you want us to RSVP to AIPP at LongmontColorado.gov, right, Angela? Or just raise your hand right now. Um, if you're planning on coming, it is in person. And also, if you would like to institute any parameters on masking and distancing, we're going to be pretty good about it and sanitizing. I think I'm going to be there with the friends. Great. Yeah. I, I'm going to try to be there. I have some other things scheduled that day. If I can work those around, then I'll make, I'll make this the priority. Great. I will be there, but probably not at 8.30 because I'll be sleeping still, maybe. That's the breakfast. It really starts at 9.30. But I got to feed you and get y'all. I like free food. And caffeinated. Yeah. Caffeinated. Angela, how, ma how many people do you think um, did we anticipate will 
be attending or how many have been invited at this point? Well, so hold your hands up if you're planning on coming. I, I'm sort of, I, I think so. That's all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So, uh, if we get 25, I would be really excited. Um, I have confirmed three city staff who will be joining us, which is really exciting. Um, Aaron Fosdick from uh, uh, Planning and Development. I'm hoping Wayne Tomac will come from uh, Community Services. Francie Jaffe from Sustainability and Resiliency is coming. Um, Justin Veach from um, the Stewart Auditorium is going to be there. Kim is going to be there. Um, I'm hoping that Karen Roney comes. That would be really great. Um, and I'm hoping Marsha will come too. And then the friends have been invited. The museum advisory board has been invited. The creative district, anyone who is a stakeholder um, that way is invited. And um, yeah, so I, I, if we could get 25, that would be great. If we get 30, I'd be a little, you know. Yeah. Be a lot, but that'd be okay. Are you gonna put out a yeah. <clears throat> sign up sheet for volunteers to help you organize and okay and so we'll look forward that look forward to that for the in the next few days or week yeah um i i now know um that i am picking up the breakfast so that was like a big linchpin um so setting up the breakfast and cindy's going to do check-in so really setting up the breakfast and helping brian get the room ready what's so going to be on the menu for the breakfast starting. what's that What's on the menu for the breakfast? Uh, breakfast items that also include things from the earth directly that do not have gluten or dairy. Um, any, yeah. Every, if you have any issues, I got you covered. Oh, that, I, I just want to know whether I want to eat it. Or not. It's going to be delicious. Yeah, do I want to wake up early and get breakfast or what? Yes. Um. Yeah, then it'll be good. I mean, I see this as just such a big opportunity to have a lot of people involved with focusing on going in a, a similar direction as a group rather than just even AIPP. So this is just a giant opportunity for us all to be a part of how our our community moves forward in, in how we develop a creative culture. So I'm just really excited about it, Angela. I know you've worked really hard and it's, the fruits are going to come up. So yeah, these, thanks for all your hard work. Yeah. Thank you, Angela, for organizing it and putting it together and inviting the invite stall that um, will participate. I think there are going to be some great seeds planted at really exciting I don't want to spill yeah. beans, but I desperately want to spill beans, but I'm not going to spill any beans, though. So. <laughs> It'll be good. Oh, how about just one bean? One bean. Okay. Just because it was in the news like two days ago, and chances are, if you're a nerd like me, you might have read it. So the city of Denver had some drainage issues, like some big drainage issues, where they had to reroute water. And so the city has this problem and Black Cube, um, Nomadic Black Cube project, which is like a pop-up installation brain uh, came in and said, well, why don't we bring a creative mind into doing this? So instead of making a ditch to move standing water, they created a, not a park, um, but not a public art piece per se, um, but a, a drainage ditch. And chances are kids who are, skate park lovers are going to totally love it but people who are from the west will see the mountains in it because the creative brain that they brought um is from the west and so he worked with engineers um and he is also a skateboarder 
and they made like basically a not skate park. And so what it does for urban development is it keeps skateboarders in a place um, to, to really conquer, um, but they know that they're gonna be there, but it also doesn't fall under wreck. So um, since it's not a skate park, they're not really liable for it. So it was all the brilliant things, all the brilliant things coming together. And it wouldn't have happened if it didn't start with the city saying, hey, we have a problem. And creative mind saying, hey, you address this problem the same way every time. Like, what if this, you know? And so um, while public art is always going to have memorials and they're always going to have monuments and testaments and tell stories about our community, there's also other ways that we can uh, infect our little neighborhoods and come and meet them where they are with their problems, even in infrastructure and turn it into something that's awesome. So I get really jazzed about that. <laughs> I think it's great. So <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited for the day. I really, really am. And um, so. Yeah, and Brian's a lot of fun. And, oh, I can say this too. He is a Meow Wolf artist. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Meow. Oh, they just released the name of the artists in Denver who are the brains behind that. And I won't be surprised when we walk into Meow Wolf and see his glorious... The, the Meow Wolf in Denver? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's opening this open, fall. What, next in the fall, in August or something? Yeah, I've been to the Meow Wolf in Santa Fe, so I'm looking forward to that opening here. Oh. Yeah, last I saw, Governor Polis was actually really wolf stuff. I mean, that's a pretty big support behind that. So very cool. Anything else on the, the workshop, Angela, that you want to share that we missed? No, just that it's going to be a lot of fun. And city council gets back in person on the 29th and we're meeting on the 26th, but. Good we'll just... timing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it'll be our first kind of get back, but it's a workshop. It's not a meeting. It's a, it's a workshop. So there's a difference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is it time to move then to administrator's report, Angela? Yep. All the updates are in the agenda. So I have nothing new. Okay. Yes. How about commissioners' reports, comments? Anybody have anything they'd like to say? Is there any plan to do the, to seal, to repair and seal the mural at 9th and Alpine? <laughs> I yes, walk up there I would, every day. I wish he would commit to a date, but he has not yet. And I know it's because he's trying to do other work in Northern Colorado. Um, I don't really have any tools to hold his feet to the fire, except that he has to finish it this fiscal year by contract. So, okay. Will we have new commissioners next meeting and will we be meeting in person? Uh, I do not anticipate no, meeting questions. in person because it's going to roll out from city council down. Um, so I don't, I don't anticipate that. Um, maybe um and then uh marcia's not here but they did interviews uh tuesday so i imagine that i should be receiving an email if those folks accept he oh well, peter you know did you get an email peter no i was going to ask about that should should i expect to be continuing i've not heard how did that interview go I didn't have an interview. They didn't. Oh, oh. So you're returning. They might not interview you because you're returning. Right. I, I just I filled out I filled out the form. I filled out the, the the form and sent it in, but I've heard nothing since then. I'll Saying, send it yes, I want to continue. I mean, I had a know, three minute inter interview. Maybe maybe I'm persona non grata to the city council. I don't know. Mm. 
Okay, I'll send a note to the city clerk's office and I will, I'll find out. But I anticipate that we should have Peter and Laurel returning. Um, God willing. A couple oh, you had a, you had a, a second interview? A re I had a three minute, three minutes. By the time they got to me it was, and, and had to leave, so. Well, that's basically what my interview was the first time. It was oh, about three minutes. I didn't have a second interview. No, right, right. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. That was that was what I had before. They they, they basically asked me two questions: what, Why do you want to be on the commission, and what's your favorite artwork? Ah, uh, I put in a few good words for Angela Brill. <laughs> so they, they, are, they are darn lucky to have Angela running the show here, boy. Can't wait until I meet some of you in person for the first. Yeah. Time. <laughs> so ridiculous okay all right um i will i will check with the city clerk's office because that sure doesn't seem fair to me sorry about that okay any other comments from commissioners move adjournment so it looks like it's 7 53 we're done a few minutes early and peter moves to adjourn Second. <laughs> okay, so we'll see everyone on the if not on the first, then on the twenty sixth, right? July. June twenty sixth no. is oh, June sixth, right? The next meeting well, is first. July. Help Angela with with art on the move help her with some of those things on art on the move if you've got the opportunity that's monday the 21st right angela mm -hmm. it's monday 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 fun day i'll send i'll send the dates and also the words that you can expect so if there's something you really want to see okay 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 Bye. thank you all so much Good night, everyone. Thank you, Angela, and great job. Okay, yes. thank great you. to see everyone. See you soon. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Angela.